our hope is that more people will join in. When you do, when you work with them, there's a great satisfaction. So please join in. Thank you. Ms. Mahoney, followed by Andy Fabella. Good evening. I just wanted to thank the um, board superintendent about doing the resolution for the LGB History Month. Um, I'm going to try to stay calm, but I think it was rude for Mr. Ashton to leave during this uh, reading of the resolution. I also think it was rude for him to leave during the vote of the resolution. I think it was very disrespectful to the LGBT students and the staff of the district. Uh, and I hope at the end of the meeting maybe you can see or tell why you left during the LGB resolution. And now I'll play something else. I don't know that we can, I, I don't know that we can play. So far, a lot of people joined us and rejected Proposition 6. Okay. And now we owe them something. We owe them to continue the education campaign that took place. We must destroy the myths once and for all, shatter them. We must continue to speak out. And most importantly, most importantly, every gay person must come out. As difficult as it is, you must tell your immediate family, you must tell your relatives, you must tell your friends if indeed they are your friends, you must tell your neighbors, you must tell the people you work with, you must tell the people in the stores you shop in, you that we are indeed their children and we are indeed everywhere. Every myth, every lie, every innuendo will be destroyed once and for all. And once, once you do, you will feel so much better. Shame on you, Mr. Ashton. Mr. If we could um, not, hope we could hold our applause so that we can get through the speakers, please. Um, Andy Fabella. Board President Ashton, board members, and pres or, um, excuse me, Superintendent Nelson. Um, I'm talking about tonight, my topic is going to be about respect. We read a civility act when we first started this board meeting. Um, according to the uh, Supreme Court of our country, uh, we disrespect our our people, this nation, or some of them, every time we salute our flag, our Supreme Court has said that uh, when you say God, when you say liberty and justice, for you know, uh, they, they fixed it. They said you're supposed to say all instead of God. When we, um, when Mr. De La Serta has his rosary beads there, he um, disrespects all the Catholics in this district because that's not where beads are for, you know. They're just using them as a misogynistic thing there and you know, that's just not what it's there for. This is not a place for Christian prayer. The Supreme Court has stated that in the public forum, members of a public agency cannot um, use prayer or faith when um, uh, discerning or appropriating funds or making decisions that, con that concern the general public. That's a violation of federal law there. It also violates the uh, Exclusionary Act of the First Amendment when it says, the Constitution says, we will not promote any one single religion but include all. We also talk about um, our board policies. You know, we've, we've got this one here. It says here, I've looked up and down our board policies. I can't find anything that says anything about censuring a person or removing a person as board president. And if you read this document here that was given tonight, the last two sentences says are of it on state Definitively, this is the district now. The superintendent or designee shall decide whether a whether a request is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board, 
items not within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board may not be placed on the agenda. We have no board policy, therefore it is not in the purview of this board to do that, to censure or remove a person as a president. We have no administrative policy that does the same thing. So for anyone to put this item on this agenda, again, disrespects the board policies and administrative policies of this district by going against them. You, you disrespect yourselves. So how can anybody respect you if you don't even follow your own board policies? Now, I know I get a little enthusiastic sometimes, but uh, I've seen some people here, you know, this gentleman be as disruptive as anybody I've ever seen before in my life, maybe worse than me. But I got suspended from a board meeting one time and I couldn't come to a board meeting because, you know, they said, oh, well, I was calling him names, whatever. But this guy can disrupt an entire boardroom back in September and even back in February, thank if you recall. You. Thank you, Mr. Fabella. Thank you. Gary Barsoom, followed by Reverend Roger Manassian. Thank you. I appreciate the time to do this. My name is Gary Barsoom. We are living in an unprecedented time here in America. I, I want to address, excuse me, I forgot, I'm, I want to address the LGBTQ issue in regards to Mr. Ashton. I'm going to start over. We are living in an unprecedented time here in America. We are a nation once founded upon self-evident truth, yet are now rejecting it. Intolerance against Christians is shaping our culture. From our schools, where prayer is prohibited, to our places of work, where florists and photographers, among others, can be put out of business for refusing to compromise their moral beliefs. Even fame or celebrity is no protection. Just ask the Benham brothers, whose HGTV show was canceled because of their Christian beliefs on marriage and abortion. Bad ideas about sexuality have resulted in, resulted in bad results for the family, and many of those bad ideas originated on college campuses. What was once stigmatized as deviant behavior is now tolerated and even sanctioned. What was once regarded as abnormal has been normalized. As deviancy is normalized, what was once normal is now considered deviant. The kind of family that has been regarded for centuries as natural and moral, the bourgeoisie family, as it is condescendingly called, is now seen as pathological and exclusionary. Why would we expect decades of teaching sexual promiscuity in our schools to result in sexual restraint in our students? Why are we surprised at the selfishness of our culture when we have immersed several generations of our children in a curriculum that teaches self-esteem more effectively than it does science and civics? How can we possibly think teaching values clarification rather than moral absolutes will result in a virtuous people? We seem to think education is about acquiring more information than embracing more ethics. The educational establishment has lost its way and as a consequence, our culture is losing its sense, and we are in danger of losing our souls. You have my backing, Mr. Ashton. Thank you. Please, please let's, hold, let's hold our applause, please. Reverend Roger Manassian, followed by Bishop Gerald Westbrooks. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Reverend Roger Manassian, uh, pastor of churches for 22 years and founder of Hope Now for Youth in 1993, which has taken over 2,000 gang members off our streets through caring relationships and jobs. I'm concerned about teaching LGBT under the Healthy Youth Act because these lifestyles are very often unhealthy escapes from a previously unhealthy life and only adds often more pain. Like many of them, hundreds of our gang members have been sexually molested, and the rest of the 2,000 have been raised with drug-addicted mothers, absent fathers, or other severe trauma. Their unhealthy escapes are violence and substance abuse, which only produces more pain. In response, the Lord Jesus gave me a stress recognition and release assessment which has delivered many of these youth to productive lives by God's power. Similar to escaping into any pain-numbing addiction, 
LGBT is often an escape from the anger of unrecognized childhood trauma. And often what is considered normal in a family as a child grows up turns out to be really unhealthy, as I've found with many gang members. At the heart of every child who is abused is a desperate loneliness that can only be healed uh, by the love and infinite worth that God places on them, often through the caring relationship of others. Let's not add more brokenness to their pain. Let's encourage true caring on the road to health. Now, every child responds differently to the same parenting. Our oldest son considered piano lessons and church attendance as child abuse, and he was serious. Tragically, he died from his motorcycle addiction. Our second child received, our second son received the same parenting and is, and is a musician in ministry today. I wish I had known earlier about stress recognition and release that has since delivered people from violence, broken relationships, depression, anxiety attacks, physical pain, and even autoimmune disorders from psoriasis to Lou Gehrig's disease. Let's not teach our children to worship the American Idol, which is, as we well know, sex anytime, sex anywhere, sex any place, sex anyhow, with anybody. The Bible says we were created in the image of God. Male and female, he created them. We can help our children get past their pain and anger to embrace their wonderful God-given creation. Thank you. Thank you. Let's please hold our applause. Bishop Gerald Westbrooks, followed by Zoyer Zendel. To the President, Brother Brooke, Bob Nelson, and this distinguished board, I celebrate you tonight. I didn't come to crucify anybody. I come to celebrate you and what you've done for my life my granddaughter who came from the Fresno Unified School District who ran into bullets being shot in Las Vegas because she knew who she was. God created a man and a woman, period. I didn't come to crucify you. You be what you want to be. You do Bishop, what you want to do. We'll have to speak at the microphone because they, they're recording it. But my children, I have 13 of them. I have 48 grandchildren. And now we're starting to have the little ones, the great grandchildren, coming aboard. And I'm teaching them in the way of the Lord. I don't blame you for leaving. I don't agree either. But I'm not going to crucify anybody. You said something that turned my world upside down when this thing first started. You said, I'm concerned about the children. Be concerned. I don't want my children taught this. I could care less what government says what you this board say or what anybody in that audience could say I want my babies to be sound I spent the weekend at a wedding with my children and we sit down and talked about this Brooke Ashton my sons NFL players my grandsons lawyers that you've created in this school district sit down and I bring you a message from the Westbrooks Brewer family. Fight. Stand. No matter what, don't you even think about anything that anybody's bringing here for you to, to declare you so that you will resign from this board. Do not do it. I need you and this board to take care of my babies in the face of all this madness that people are trying to perpetrate upon my children. I thank God for you, and I'm praying for you. Thank you. God bless you tonight. Thank you, Bishop. What, Zoyer Zendel, followed by Jordan Fitzpatrick. 
My name is Zoyer Zendel and I am the chair of Transmotion, which is a 501c3 community benefit organization that offers advocacy for the transgender community and their allies here in Fresno and surrounding areas. Um, so first off, I, I definitely want to thank um, Superintendent Nelson and the other staff who have been meeting with us to um, make changes in the district and, and make positive changes so that LGBT students can feel safer and not ashamed for who they are, something that is, is inherent and innate and something that they cannot help. No one should feel ashamed for being alive just the way no one should feel ashamed for having brown hair, for having brown skin, et cetera. Um, I'm also very disappointed, Brooke Ashton, as you know, you had an opportunity to meet with us and get some clarification, because I know we had some misunderstandings over the last month, and you chose to not meet with us, and that was where you made an error. And so I'll make this short today. National Coming Out Day is, is today, and it's very important to me. I was born today, uh, 31 years ago, I was born on National Coming Out Day. And for my birthday, I only want one thing, and that's your title. I don't think that it's a good idea for you to remain as chair for the safety of all students. This is not a safe place, this district. And it will continue to not be a safe place until you're removed. Thank you very much. Please. So if we can, I'm going to ask you one more time, please do not, let's, let's not applaud one way or the other. Um, Jordan Fitzpatrick, followed by Michael Kurnasoff. Kurnasoff, Michael J. Kurnasoff, Jr. Hello, my name is Jordan Fitzpatrick. I'm the Secretary of Trans Emotion, and I'm here today to say that there is um, nothing more important for you as a board to do today than to remove Brooke Ashton's title. Um, if you don't speak out against his actions of hate and his words of intolerance, then you are sending a message that what he has said and done is right. And um, comparing the LGBT community to um, the Ottoman Empire and saying that by speaking up for ourselves that we're like the Ottoman Empire and committing genocide, that's terrible, that's wrong. And so you need to remove Brooke Ashton from the board or else you are saying that homophobia and transphobia and hatred of the LGBT community is okay. And, it, and as long as he is on the board, Fresno Unified will not be a safe school district because words like yours contribute to the um, students feeling unsafe and even suicidal. And um, so that's why I'm here to ask you to remove Brooke Ashton's title. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kurnasoff, Jr. Go ahead, sir. We're not going to be able to read that in time. Go ahead and speak, please. What you have in front of you is a breakdown of uh, an incident where my daughter was almost hit in the school crosswalk along with an employee and several other students. And the school principal, as well as the superintendent here, have selective amnesia, don't like to uh, follow up on it. Superintendent hasn't emailed me back. Principal, when I called, you know, tried to say that it wasn't a student. The staff member identified the student. Students, an unlicensed driver driving the vehicle to school every day. And uh, basically, this guy, uh, he speeds past my wife in the neighborhood on Garland. This is Duncan High School. And um, he, as he's speeding down Garland, uh, the, you got the crosswalk uh, person. Uh, it's a security, school security, Miss Rose. And she, uh, she's got the car stopped, and the, he just goes right through it. And he almost misses my daughter. My daughter intuitively figures, hey, something's not right. 
and she stops. All she had to do was put her arm out, and she could have touched the truck. And so uh, since this incident, I feel like it's just been brushed under. To say I'm uh, disappointed is, is highly an understatement. There should be enough of these. Did everybody get one of these? Because with this paper right here, I've itemized in a chart a breakdown of the entire uh, flow of events. This here is a copy of the emails. So you can see the email on page three that I sent to the principal. And then above it, you can see where I forwarded it to Mr. Nelson here. Still hasn't emailed me back. It's been about a week. Requested he put his response in email. So we had a lockdown also. Some kid brought a, a gun on campus. And, uh, you know, we didn't get phone calls till we were at home eating dinner. Only my wife got one. I know I'm on that that list where we're supposed to receive phone calls. But that was really upsetting because we got a phone call from our daughter, you know, while the, the lockdown was going on, while there was some kind of, there was a gun on campus and some shots went off. So that was upsetting. And, and then, you know, that was, it's like to add insult to injury, you got that. Um, we just feel like uh, there was nothing done to hold the student accountable. You know, you have a life and death situation with a gun. You got a life and death situation with a car. You know, no talk of anything for what I requested in there. It was real minimal. How would you guys feel if your kid was almost hit intentionally, deliberately, and then blown off by the principal, and then not responded by the superintendent? Can't even look at me. Oh, now he does. Yeah, sorry, right. What do you make, 200000 superintendent? Ballpark? You're in that ballpark. I know the principal makes about what, 120, 100? Mr. Kurnasoff, so it's not a question answer period. Um, you guys are paid by our taxes. You work for us. You're supposed to watch out for the best interest of the students. Not try to save face. So I'd like to make a suggestion. Can we have somebody meet with you and your family and try to resolve this deal and figure out how we're going to the go The next forward? step, I'm going to go to the news. So I'm disappointed so because the, they haven't Mr. done anything. Mr. Kernsov, your time is up now, but, but the news Anybody is, want a copy? The, new, the news is here. Can somebody, uh, Superintendent Nelson, can somebody, Brian Walls, our uh, superintendent, Assistant Superintendent Brian Walls will meet with you. Anybody want a copy? Thank you for coming. Okay, item B10, I will turn over to uh, clerk, our clerk, uh, Cazares. Uh, item B10, discuss. Agenda item B10, discuss censure and or remove as president of the board, Mr. Brooke Ashton. Presentation by Reverend Bill Net Netsevich. Trustees, Superintendent. Throughout history, tyrants both petty and great have always sought to consolidate power by projecting onto marginalized groups or communities the very things for which they themselves are profoundly guilty of doing and which is certainly reflected in Mr. Ashton's statements at the board meeting on August 23rd. Mr. Ashton calls the LGBTQ community the thought police and accuses the community of being nefarious in its methods of forcing others to do the community's will, of being sinister, sinister outsiders. His words are very similar to those used by the Nazis against the Jews. He compares the LGBTQ community, a people who seek to live lives of peace and dignity while respecting others and helping others in our community, to the Ottoman Turks who were guilty of genocide. The simple matter of the fact is that Mr. Ashton holds a position of power and authority in this school district. The LGBTQ community does not. The simple fact of the matter is that Mr. Ashton, in his position as board president, is trying to be the thought police for the school district by all nefarious means, yet, as I have pointed out, he accuses the LGBTQ community of doing this. And his statements go well beyond the tax on the LGBTQ community. 
He also seeks to force his Judeo-Christian philosophy, as he calls it, on a people and people who do not even come from Judeo-Christian traditions through the bully pulpit and influence of his office. Trustee Cazares said that the uh, board cannot and will not hold Mr. Ashton accountable for his remarks. Will not is probably true, unfortunately, but cannot is not true. In our research and in our dialogues with several attorneys in the ACLU, it is clear that even without anything being written in the board's bylaws concerning censor and removal from presidency, this board can act to censor and remove Mr. Ashton from the presidency of the board. Furthermore, the ACLU suggests that this board do put in bylaws to deal with issues like this. Trustee Cazares is worried about protection, protecting free speech, echoing Mr. Ashton's remarks, which I guess includes hate speech. And she is worried that any board member could be censored if the board acted upon our demand. Well, you can bet that if any of the board members here said half the things that Mr. Ashton has said about the LGBTQ community, you'd be getting a similar demand. This is not about free speech. It is about a person using his office to denigrate, isolate, dehumanize, alienate, vilify, and attack a marginalized people while forcing his narrow Judeo-Christian philosophy upon those who do not share his beliefs, including the clergy that is signed the letter that I am about to read. Now this letter comes from clergy who represent congregations that are in the Judeo-Christian tradition. We stand in solidarity with the LGBTQ community and all communities who are attacked, belittled, and marginalized by politicians using their religious beliefs to suppress, vilify, and denigrate others while consolidating political power for themselves. Our country's motto is E Pluribus Unum, out of many one has no place for tyrants who use their offices to force their will upon others. And here is the letter. We as representatives of many faith communities are in shock by the remarks that President Ashton read into the official minutes of last Wednesday's board meeting, and that would have been the August 23rd board meeting. It is clear from his remarks that he has nothing but contempt for the LGBTQ community, especially the most vulnerable some who happen to be LGBTQ children. To compare the LGBTQ community to mass murderers, the Ottoman Turks, is reprehensible. His remarks have done serious damage to the board. Many of our communities of faith have LGBTQ members, some who are even Armenian. His remarks aimed at vilifying and dehumanizing those who sought to hold him accountable for his prejudicial words concerning the LGBTQ community cannot be ignored or tolerated. We as faith leaders demand that at a minimum the board publicly censor Mr. Ashton and preferably remove him from the presidency of the board. Your inactions or actions will either condone his comments sending a chilling message to the students of the district that it is okay to hate, or they will affirm the diversity and beauty of all our children regardless of their ancestry or sexual orientation. Faithfully signed, Reverend Bill Knezovich, me, pastor of Our Savior's Lutheran Church, Mark W. Homerud, bishop of the Sierra Pacific Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Reverend Dr. Norman Broadbent, United Church of Christ Clergy, Reverend Steve Ratzliff, retired pastor, Mennonite Community Church, Reverend Karen Stoffers Pugh, Wesley United Methodist Church, Jim Grant, Director, Social Justice Ministry, Diocese of Fresno, Roman Catholic, Reverend Akiko Miyake Stoner, United Methodist Clergy, the Reverend R. R. Gugazian, Rabbi Rick Weiner, Reverend Dr. Chris Breedlove, Pastor of Community United Church of Christ, Reverend Tim Kutzmark, Pastor of Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, 
Reverend Sophia DeWitt, United Church of Christ Clergy, Reverend Deacon Stephen Schickfington, Episcopal Church, Reverend Paul Clark, Lutheran Campus Ministry. Now I know there's nothing you can do tonight, but I would certainly hope that the board would take it under advisement. These are faith communities, and as I said again, a lot of LGBTQ Christians have been seriously hurt. Thank you. Do any trustees wish to speak to this item? Trustee Mills. Thank you, Trustee Cazares. I appreciate the remarks and the sentiment, but I disagree with the comment. I think this is an issue of the First Amendment and freedom of speech. And maybe I perceive it that way because I'm an attorney and that's my training. And there was an article in the paper recently in the Fresno Bee, and the caption says, racist speech is protected, panel told. I don't think any of us support racist speech. But there's a quote in here that I think is worth mentioning. It's from Erwin Shemarinsky. He is a constitutional scholar. He is the dean of the UC Berkeley School of Law. I have actually been privileged to be at several seminars where he has been teaching and presenting on constitutional law. He's an excellent speaker. And his comment says, as I try to tell my students, the only way our free speech will be protected tomorrow is if we safeguard the speech we do not like today. And that's what we're talking about. I don't think anyone else on the board, myself included, agreed with Trustee Ashton's comments. I won't speak for them, but I will speak for myself. I don't agree with them. I have said that before. I wish he had not made them. But he didn't give up his First Amendment right when he became a board member. None of us did. And I want to also point to the bylaws, since those have been mentioned. And there is a bylaw, and it is Board, board Policy 9010, and it states that the board recognizes the right, I will emphasize that word, the right, of individual board members to freely express their personal views. And another board policy, 9005, requires board members to recognize and respect the differences of perspective. I heard people say that this is somehow, these comments are changing what is happening on our campus. Well, I know there's been a lot of comment on them in social media, and maybe students are hearing about it from that. But there have been two meetings with Superintendent Nelson and the LGBTQ community. And he has given assurances, as has this board at a press conference that I attended, as did at least one other board member, that what we are doing in our classrooms is teaching medically accurate, non-judgmental sex education curriculum. That's what we have been doing that has not changed. And it cannot change based on the remarks of any one board member. No one board member has the power to change anything. That only happens with a board vote from the majority. The superintendent has given assurances that we're taking additional steps to the extent any class of student feels unsafe. And we hope all of our students feel safe on our campuses. That is the goal for all of us. I understand that these remarks were very hurtful to members of this community, including some very close friends of mine. But if you want attorneys and others to defend your right to your position and your speech, then you have to acknowledge that we have to defend the right 
to express the views and to defend the rights of those with whom we disagree. That's what freedom of speech is. It's not about protecting the rights of those that you agree with to say what you want to hear. It's about protecting the right of people with whom you disagree. And I understand that that may be a difficult concept, but lawyers take an oath to support the Constitution, and every board member takes an oath to support the Constitution, and that includes the First Amendment, and that includes freedom of speech. And I have received a lot of emails. I have sat through many board meetings where people expressed their views. And I think, frankly, civil discourse, civil discourse can be difficult when there are such disparate opinions. But that is what we expect, and that is what a democracy demands. And I hope that people do not really expect me to condemn the right of someone to engage in free speech. There is a distinct difference between condemning the speech, which I do, and condemning and punishing someone for exercising that freedom of speech. And I have difficulty doing that second one. Because the board, for one, has absolutely no legal authority to remove somebody from the board. And that's how the conversation started off. And in terms of removing somebody as a board president, Trustee Cazares is correct. The bylaws don't provide for that. What state law does provide is that the board holds an annual organizational meeting at which we elect our officers. And state law also mandates and dictates that that meeting be held in December. And our bylaws mirror that, and that's what they call for. <laughs> and I think, frankly, there's been a lot of conversation about this. We've listened to the community at many meetings. But I think the superintendent had the right approach if the point of this is to make students feel safer, if the point is to provide additional services for students who need it, we are willing to do that as a board and as a district. But the way to achieve that is through a conversation with the superintendent and through a collaboration, not by each group attacking each other. I think, personally, it is time for everyone to stop the personal attacks, and that means everyone, and for everyone to focus, actually focus, on the students and on the business of educating the students and moving forward collaboratively. Thank you. Trustee de la Cerda. I do appreciate um, Board Member Mills' uh, comments, but I'd like to point out some, uh, some things as well. Um, I don't think this initially was any attempt to stifle anybody's freedom of speech. I know that I made a comment quite publicly uh, that had nothing to do with Mr. Adjian's freedom of speech. And, but I did state quite clearly that with free, free speech is free, but is not free of consequences. And as board member Mills pointed out, uh, we do not have a policy that allows this to take place. And I'm going to address that in just a minute because we also have other policies. Our board policy that directly addresses our board president and his authority and his position when speaking for the district, the board encourages the spokesperson, in this case the board president, to exercise restraint 
and tact and to communi communicate the message in a matter that promotes public confidence and the board's leadership. It's very important because yes, we are leaders because we chose to be up here and we were elected to be leaders. That's not leaders of my ideals as a Catholic or a Christian. Although they are a part of who I am. I'm a leader of all individuals, students of every race, ethnicity, gender, belief. Our policy goes on to say, when speaking to community groups, members of, and members of the public or the media, individual board members should recognize, should recognize that their statements may be perceived as reflecting the views and the positions of the board. That's where I took issue. Board members have a responsibility to identify their personal viewpoints as such and not as the viewpoint of the board. Extremely important to remember, especially when you put yourself in the role of leadership. We are in all seven of us in a role of leadership. Mr. Ajian and Ms. Casares were elected to be our spokespersons and they accepted that responsibility and they accepted it understanding these are our board policies. In addition, the board encourages members who participate on social networking sites, blogs, or other discussions or informational sites to conduct themselves in a respectful, courteous, and professional manner, and to model good behavior for district students and community. Such electronic communications are subject to the same standards and protocols established for other forms of communication and the disclosure requirement of the California Public Records Act may likewise apply to them. Now, as per, as per the policy, it was stated that there is no policy that requires us to take action. That is true enough. But nor is there, nor is there conversely, a policy that does not prevent us from taking action. So if we chose to, we could take action. There's nothing to prohibit this because as it was pointed out, it is allow, allowable for us and under the, within the board's authority to govern our own business and we reserve the right to choose our leadership. Now I for one have made my statements clear already and, and my stance. So it isn't within the jurisdiction of the board to choose leadership. If it is the majority and the will of this board that we should ask for the removal of Mr. Asgian as president to step down, so be it. But if the majority is unwilling to do so, I would encourage and insist that at least and at the minimum, we censure Mr. Mr. Asgian based on what has taken place, based on what our board policies require from our leadership, Spe specific to us all, but more, more so to our leadership. This is not a case of freedom of speech or taking one's freedom of speech away. It is in following with board policy and their expectation as a leader using board policy as that guideline and that understanding when you place yourself in that position of leadership. Our job is to represent each and every child that comes into our district, that crosses the threshold of our classroom. As a teacher, as an educator, in my 33 years that I started, those times in classroom, I did not have the right or the ability to tell students as they came into the classroom, I will teach you and you, but not you. No way, not you. Maybe you. You might have a chance, you don't have a chance. 
Every single child that came into my classroom was my responsibility. Every single child that comes into our district is our responsibility. As leaders, we have an expectation to, to and as teachers and educators, in every, whatever level we are in this district, we have an expectation to, to accept and teach and support and love our children. More so we have in the back our expectations of character that we, we want to share with our children. But as I stated before in our boardroom, that requires us as leaders because we've chosen this position to accept the responsibility of those characters, to uphold those characters, the same characters that we want to, to establish and help our children grow into, and the time, the limited time that we have your children, we have that same expectation for ourselves as the teachers, as the educators, as the leaders. And that is what this is actually referring to. And our board policy is clear enough about our words and our conduct. This is not to prevent anybody ever at all, and I'm saying this quite clearly, to prevent them to have their freedom of speech. In my mind, that would be nonsensical. But when you are in a position of authority, and you choose that position of authority, you have to also choose your words carefully and wisely, especially when you are in a position as, such as ours in the field of education. Because our children are listening. Our children are not unaware of what's taking place. Trustee Davis. Thank you. Well, I think uh, Trustee Mills was very adequate in saying that it, it is a uh, free speech, and I don't think anybody on this board feels that anybody would ever discourage free speech. But like Trustee Delasurda said, there is a responsibility. There was a time on this board when a board member at a graduation said a few disparaging words about our military, about our president, and had comments and attitudes about the California High School exit exam. Our then board president asked him to step down from the graduation um, exercises, and we let it go. There wasn't any great big hurrah months and months. He didn't go on the radio the next day and the next week and the next month and continue it. But um, no one is saying that you, can, you can't have free speech. According to the California Healthy Youth Act, I think this free speech should have been exercised more with, you can opt out. You, as a family, have the right to opt out. Do not, and your children should be safe in opting out. Your children are safe in our classrooms to go to school and to opt out of that portion of education. When 100 staff members stand up here and tell us that they want us to focus on work and that their work is being impacted by people in the community and parents saying, how are you going to protect my kid? Because I don't understand the unkind words and the attitudes that not just the board, a board member, but the one who sits as our board president expressed to us. Um, I mean, it really takes the focus off of the main thing. Um, our focus at the beginning of the year should have been on the whole district. Our focus at the beginning of the, war of the year should have been on you know, our pending strike and our negotiations with our teachers. Mm -hmm. During the summertime, we had 2,653 staff members involved in summer professional learning. That should have been the front page. Fresno Unified's teachers, staff members, paraprofessionals, office leaders, office managers, they go to classes. They learned everything on how to start the school year. You didn't see that. Instead, we had this distraction that creates a tremendous amount of anxiety and fear of safety and suicide. I recently um, attended a fourth grade showcase at one of our schools, and the kids had to show what social issues are 
brewing, and they had ten ways to, hide, to, to fight hate, and they listed ten ways. And afterwards, I got a chance to talk to the students, and I said, what's the easiest on your list? And they said, well, to act and join forces and to support victims. And I said, what's the hardest thing on this list? And they said, this is fourth graders, teaching acceptance. So if we can learn anything in school, we should learn acceptance. I don't think there's a litmus test of who's a Christian, who wears a cross, and who doesn't. I think your life speaks volumes of the way you behave. My husband and I have always taught our children, we don't pick on kids because they look different, smell different, act different, or come from a different home or ex experiences or circumstances, but we clearly, my husband and I, model our values and our lifestyle for our children to choose and to grow up healthy and kind and compassionate and caring. So that speaks for itself. But um, the, our focus needs to be, and I would challenge anyone who sits in any position, their focus should be the education of our children. I regret that of what he said, but I have true compassion for his feeling of it, and I regret what he said, and it could have been over. He, he said what he said, and bless his heart, you know. It was, he said it, came out, boom. But continual, um, you know, continual day after day, hour after hour, radio talk show, blogs, etc. And, you know, when I run into clergy, and I thank the clergy for coming in tonight, and I see you at um, breakfasts and luncheons and events, I always say, I always grab Pastor Franklin or H. Spees and my own pastor, Don Hargis, and say, pray for us. People who go to the Vatican, I tell them, light a candle for us. Mm -hmm. Remember Fresno Unified. And in the morning, I am tremendously grateful for this meeting when I wake up. And I don't know your name, but I see your face, and I call you out. And my thankfulness and my attitude of gratitude for the work these people that sit in these chairs do on behalf of our community, your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your people. Because in our life, that's all we have. Our cars are mortgaged, our house is mortgaged, or some things are pay off. And our, you know, the only thing we truly own are our children. And we all collectively own every child in this community. I may sit in this area and live in, 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 a, in, a, in the Sunnyside area, but I don't respect any, any border. I'll go to another school and I'll see what's going on and I'll encourage teachers at every school, the principals at every school. Like all of our, our board members, a lot of our board members, their children live in one area and they attend other schools outside of their area. They have the opportunity to really access the very best things and choices in our community. Um, Mr. Astian is a, is a likable guy. He's got great stories. He was kind and enough to take me home after one meeting. He went out of his way because I live on the other side of town, and I appreciate that. But it's a matter of what will do the better good. Will every word that comes out of my mouth help and support students in the classroom, teachers in the classroom, principals, people at the school site, as well as people here. So um, if given the opportunity, I wish that uh, we would have had more governance and strategies for how we can, um, uh, well, I, I have a master's in governance as, as, long, as well as Trustee Mills and see, Trustee Ryan had one and you went to CSBA. There's classes for that and there's strategies so we don't fall into a pitfall like, like the situation that we have found ourselves in. So I just think that we need to uh, really call a ceasefire. No more radio, no more blogging, no more television, and, and, uh, and let's stay focused on our students. Let's make the main thing the main thing, as they say. <laughs> and um, I, I clearly would truly look forward to new leadership to lead us collectively for the safety of our children 
and uh, the many staff members that are facing our, our, our students in our community. Thank you. Trustee Johnson. I'll be brief. Uh, listening to uh, Trustee Mills and everyone else, uh, i just like to say that Ashton, he has the right to uh, voice his opinion. But also, I think that as a uh, leader, he needs to uh, temper what he says because he took, when he took this oath of office, um, he was supposed to deal with how the state wants to educate our kids. The other part that I would like to say when we talk about freedom of speech, there's a contradiction in all of that. And I'm going to go in a different direction. When we talk about our children, and then when I look at this flag here, and when I look at football games on Sunday morning, where you have 85 to 90 percent of people that look like me, then we then do not have free speech because most Americans don't like for me to kneel. So we can see all of these contradictions when we talk about Judeo-Christian ethics and philosophies. And when we can go back into history, we understand that many times people use that Bible, and I'm a Christian, use that Bible to lynch people on Sunday mornings after leaving the church. And see, and people don't like to hear that. But see, I just can't sit here and listen to all of this stuff that comes up. I, <clears throat> the, uh, the individuals who came before the dais, you know, I support you. And I'm not going to say anything negative about you because the same kinds of persecution that you go through, I've gone through that persecution for years. And when I used to carry this flag as a United States military man, certain places I could not go without in my uniform, okay? So when I listen to all of this contradiction, that bothers me. And what we need to be talking about, how do we <clears throat> change our attitudes? And when I talk about attitudes, I am talking about <laughs> my brother down here that <clears throat> he has his belief I have my belief and we are brothers and we have he understand what I'm talking about and and we need to think about all the contradictions and when we talk about our children why they can't behave and don't behave that's because they look at the adults we don't behave we're not good examples for our children. We live in our houses in Northwest Fresno, wherever we live. We live out there in Clovis, and then we talk about little black people. How many slaves are we going to go get? Okay? So education is about cleaning up your mind. And if you can't clean up your mind, don't come up here and <clears throat> pretend how good you are and talk about that Bible and, how, and what a good Christian you are because on Sunday mornings, that is the most segregated hour in America. Right. So think about that. Right. And so when you go get on your knees and pray and ask, how are we going to change America? And the change began with you first. Thank you. Any other trustees? I just want to add, um, Trustee Jonas and Rosa said something a couple of meetings ago that really, really touched me, and I want to repeat it. It's, uh, it's been an unfortunate that uh, as a board we've had to defend our stand of are standing next to all of our students. Um, I've never had to say so many times and repeat it again and again at every, what, every one of these meetings how much I love all of our students, how much we stand and respect every one of our students in this district. That's why we ran, that's why we're here. That's why I leave my family every two Wednesdays, sometimes three or four days during the month until 10 or 11 at night. Yes. And I, I don't know why we have to keep, keep um, explaining ourselves on either side. I, I understand both sides. I appreciate both sides. Thank you for coming. I, I hope that we could move forward. I like the mention from Trustee Davis of a ceasefire. I really do appreciate that. Um, 
we, there is business to do here, and we have been trying to conduct business since August, and I wish we could just get past this because our students deserve that more than anything that we could bring to the uh, table. With that, there are 13 individuals seeking to address the board on this item. You will each have two minutes to address the board. We will start with Dr. Kevin Macy A. Yacht and continue with Kayla McCaff after that. Dr. Kevin Macy A. Yacht. Thank you. <clears throat> First, none of us are calling for censorship of President Ashton's free speech rights. As a professor of communication, as well as a Fresno Unified parent, I revere the First Amendment and I always defend everyone's right to express even objectionable speech. The First Amendment does not, however, require this board to condone Ashton's speech. A resolution of censure would be one way for this board to express publicly its condemnation of Mr. Ashton's statement. A motion to censure is like any other motion under Robert's Rules of Order and could be introduced by any member of the board at any time. You do not need a policy specifically authorized for censure. You can do this, so it is a choice by each and every one of you whether or not to do so. Second, although the board bylaws do not currently contain a provision for stripping Ashton of his presidency, the board policy number 9312 governing the bylaws states that, quote, bylaws may be adopted and amended by a majority vote of all members of the board following the same procedures as those used for the adoption or amendment of policy, unquote. With all due res respect, the notion that state law regarding the election of board members somehow prohibits the removal of a president or the amendment to your bylaws is materially false. Again, you can amend the bylaws to create procedures for removing the president and electing someone else to that role. So you need to take responsibility for the choice not to do so. This is not about removing Ashton from the board, but his public leadership role in the position of board president. The reason that anti-gay and anti-trans harassment and violence continues to occur is because perpetrators hear validation from people like board president Ashton who say it's not okay to be LGBT. <clears throat> You've heard a number of times from young LGBT students who tried to kill themselves because people like Ashton tell them they're not okay and no one stands up publicly to condemn the hate. As I said here four weeks ago, if Ashton would have said it's not okay to be black or Latina or disabled or female, I can't imagine any of you not standing up publicly to condemn him and you would certainly be doing it in front of TV cameras. We have a right to expect better you, than a board Macy president a who displays it. public disdain for his students Sir. and the families he is supposed to represent. Next we have, please could we limit our applauses out of respect for the rest of our um, audience members here. The next uh, speaker is Kay Kalia Metcalf. It's um, Kalia Metcalf and I am a parent and I wrote down because I'm nervous. I was angry when I got here, but now I'm just sad after listening to what everybody has said. So I'm going to stick to what I wrote, but I'm not speaking to you, Mr. President, because I don't think you'll listen to someone like me, but to the rest of you, you see yourselves as good people. You give to charity and I know you give your time, you obey the laws and you probably even let people go ahead of you in line sometimes. You see yourselves as good people. I know you love your family. I know you say kind things to each other and to your neighbors. And I know you vote along your conscience. You aren't racists. You aren't bigots. You aren't mean-spirited. You see yourselves as good people. But now it is time for us to see that you can take a stand and prove it. Words matter. Opinions are your own, but words spoken by a position from a leader in a public place about my child those should be held to a higher standard. Words matter, and Mr. Ashton's words were hurtful, misguided, and dangerous. Words matter, but actions can empower, so please be empowered and do the right thing. Do a good thing. Make a censure. You're good people. I know you are, so please act like it. Thank you, Ms. Metcalf. Next is Howard Watkins. Uh, members of the board, Superintendent Nelson. I was once president of the Fresno County Bar Association, and for people that know me, I give a lot of opinions on a lot of issues. But when I was president, I only gave opinions that were con consistent with the board of directors and my obligations as president of the bar. If I wanted to give an opinion outside of the bar, I did not incorporate the bar. Trustee Mills, you are correct about members. 
All of you are members because you were put here by the voters in your district. However, as clerk and as president, you were in those offices because of what the board members did. And so as a member of the board, not as an officer, you are free to say anything you want. You can spout Nazism if you want to go to a real extreme. That's free speech. But once you are the public face by volunteering to serve as president or as clerk, but especially as president, your president's the face of this board. That In that office, the president needs to withhold his or her opinion when speaking as the president of the board. Now, when the B interviewed uh, President Ashton, I don't know if that was in the board capacity or not, but clearly when he gave his ending speech comparing LGBT advocates to the Ottoman Turks, that was his president of this board. That was outrageous. What do you do if you have a president of the board that says the earth is flat? Landing on the moon was fake. Sandy Hook was a fraud. There's a point where you would need to intervene. And I believe Robert's Rules of Orders is part of the board structure. I don't know if it is for a fact, but if it is, that's a basis to censure or remove. You're not prohibited from doing it. And if you don't take action, you are condoning his statements no matter what else you say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Next is Eleanor Adote, and after that will be Jacob Pote. Members of the Fresno Unified School Board and Superintendent Nelson, good evening. My name is Eleanor Dote, and as a Fresno Unified parent of two students, I'd like to offer three reasons tonight as to why I believe Mr. Ashton should be removed from the board, or at the very least censured. First, Mr. Ashton's tenure has been wrought with controversy for most of his presidency. From the investigation surrounding his connection to Bush construction, to his comments which have offended the Mon community, the ESL community, the special needs community, the LGBT community, even um, the community of students that live south of Shaw. Mr. Ashton has displayed a habit of making offensive or inappropriate statements and decisions, which is not what I would expect of my school board president, and at times has even shed a negative light on the district nationally. Second, Mr. Ashton's actions have distracted from the business of the school board and the order of the school district. The hours spent discussing this topic is time that we should be, spend, uh, that we should be spending on the education of our youth not the defense or the criticism of our school's leadership. Finally, Mr. Ashton's comments have contributed to a hostile work environment both within the district as well as throughout our local communities. Not only have we seen Mr. De La Cerda's letter to the Fresno Bee, but I have most recently watched as Mr. Ashton has publicly taken to Twitter to criticize teacher sal salaries and then question the legitimacy of their demands in regard to the impending strike. You know, so members of the school board, is this the type of leadership that we should expect and allow from our school board president? Especially in a time when tensions are high with an impending strike, can we really afford to have a school board president who publicly antagonizes his critics at a time when we need to be mending those bridges? And so with that in mind, I urge you to consider removing Mr. Ashton from his position on the school board, or at the very least voting for his censure, as his presence has become more of a liability than an asset to our students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Jacob Dottie. Hello, my name is Jacob Dote, and I am in 10th grade at Design Science High School, South of Shaw, may I add. Um, June 5th, 2017, my brother graduated with the class of 2017 at Bullard High School. Students gave amazing speeches and talked about going into the real world in an honorable and respectable and formal manner. And then our school board president, Brooke Ashton, came up to speak. I was blown away about how quickly the integrity of the room fell apart. He spoke with fa unfactual statements, and at the very least, uncited. Such statements included that disabled students had 98% attendance, while the only thing high schoolers showed up to 100% of the time is Snapchat. Not only is this not true, how can you imagine that the students with perfect attendance felt? Furthermore, the presidents went on to end his speech with, catch me outside, how about that? 
the pronunciation of which fitted that of the current meme. I can, I can understand and respect trying to relate to the kids, but after amazing speeches from the valedictorian and student body, we get left with, catch me outside, how about that? This man has since ang angered the LGBT community, Armenian community, the teachers of our school district, and the special needs community, just to name a few. Our school board president is unprofessional, and we cannot trust what he will or even might do online or in person. You have the right to speak as an individual, but when you make statements and say, as school board president, or on our behalf of Fresno Unified, you aren't speaking as an individual, you are speaking for the entirety of the students, and the parents of the school district. Freedom of speech is, be, is freedom of speech is free, but not free from the consequences, as Board Member De La Cerda said. And now I ask all of you: Is this the board president that we want to have? Thank you. Thank you. Next is Reverend Steve Skiffington. After that will be Patricia Potter. Good evening. I come to you today not only as a member of the clergy, but as a father, a grandfather, a retired teacher, and yes, an openly ordained gay man. I was insulted and deeply hurt by the comments that I read. My husband and I were together 32 years before he died two years ago of cancer, not AIDS. When you have a child who is misbehaving, and causing harm to the family, you become the adult and you tell the child, you don't set the rules, we do. I think this board has already done that by the comments Mr. Nelson made earlier that in regards to the training of LGBT children and meeting with the community, I thank you for that. So the board in a way has already taken action. But not only must you be the adult and set the agenda, you must tell that child you're on restriction. And that's what you need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Patricia Potter, and after that will be Reverend Chris Breedlove. Good evening. Mr. Ashian has not done anything illegal. And he has the right to say the things that he has said. The request to remove him as board president has nothing to do with those issues. It has to do with following board policy, much of which Mr. De La Cerda said. Other things I wanted to say have been said. I just want to add that another board policy that's been violated is board policy 0411 that says the governing board recognizes its duty to align the work of the district with the community values of the Fresno region, which values inclusiveness and seeks diversity. If we have all of the members of the board saying they disagree with what Mr. Astian says, we have 100 staff members come forward, all the you know people that have come before you, all the hubbub that's been happening, Certainly, um, the values of the district are not um, being reflected. Um, and all the examples that have been given, certainly inclusive, inclusiveness and diversity has not been respected. So the reason that I support removing him as president, not from the board, just as president, is because he is not following policy. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Reverend Chris Breedlove. After that will be Andrew Fabella. I'm slightly encouraged this evening because I hear an undertone of an impending uh, vote coming in December. And the undertone I hear, without anybody really saying it overtly, is that the board members are going to decide in December to remove Brooke Ashton from board president of this, uh, uh, this current board. And so if that's the case, I don't know if I'm being prophetic in this moment or just hearing the obvious undertone. I hope that the board members certainly do that. I, I didn't know that when uh, clergy wrote the letter encouraging the removal of uh, Brooke Ashton or censure at a minimal, I didn't know that I would have to send with that letter a dictionary what censure means. Uh, in a conversation or a, a correspondence with uh, uh, board member Claudia, 
I, 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 and from her comments in Fresno B, I take it that you misunderstand what censor and censure mean, the difference between the two. Nobody is censoring Brooke Ashton's freedom of speech. That is a red herring argument uh, that only, uh, Carol, that only distracts us from the real matter at hand. Censure, at a minimal, takes very seriously hurtful and harmful speech. It is a resolution within your power, within your ability. You just passed uh, a wonderful uh, resolution for October to be LGBT History Month. But your efforts ring hollow if you don't censure Brooke Ashton tonight. Your commitments to the LGBT community, students and faculty, those commitments that you speak so wonderfully as individuals, those commitments ring hollow if you don't censure Brooke Ashton this evening. And for all of us hitting the voting booths next uh, voting cycle, we know your names, we know what you vote for, and we, we're taking uh, to heart what you've said here tonight, this evening. We are following your careers with intense interest. Brooke, I don't know why you compare yourselves to Don Corleone. I don't know why you think that you are... Uh, 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 Reverend Breedlove, your time is up. Thank I really you, appreciate it. Um, I do want to add that I appreciate the public education system that took me through the college, and I do understand the difference between censor and censure. So thank you, the public education system of the state of California. Andrew Fabella is next, <clears throat> followed by Tony Onka. Thank you. This is exactly about free speech, because censuring does inhibit someone from promoting free speech or having free speech. Free speech allows this board to have a free and open dialogue about controversial issues that affect our students be it budgetary, administratively, or policy-wise. For the ministers behind me to infer that this board promotes hatred or is anti-LGBTQ is simply ludicrous because you can't do what you want. That's just, you know, that's just insane. That's to assume that Christ himself committed an actual sin in order to get crucified. Twelve years of parochial school and studying that Bible, I believe Jesus Christ was crucified without sin. A friend of mine, Jake Green, works for the FBI, and he asked me one time, he says, Andy, what do you think about a government's constitution that not only tries to protect the rights of those who want to make this country better, but also protects the rights of those who try to tear it down? My response to Jake was, God bless America, because it promotes both sides of the pendulum. Board members cannot function if they are fearful of being censured because they are in the minority. We have open communications so that our public can express their opinions on how the district and its board and its classrooms and its staff operate this school district. I had a um, cousin who was killed in Vietnam in 1967 and he's going to turn 18 years old for the 50th time and he did not die so a group of people behind me can tell me that I'm more Christian or less Christian that they are right and I am wrong or that I am like that I am Thank less you, Mr. alike Fabella. of LGBTQ than that they was, are. That's the end of your public you. comment period Mr. Fabella. Next is Tony Anka followed by Tristan Stokes. Good evening, trustees and Superintendent Nelson. While it may take time away from the business of academic achievement when so many of us speak at your meetings, I hope you see it as a sign that the community cares and we still have hope and trust in the district to remedy the situation brought about by Mr. Astian and his public com uh, remarks. If this board doesn't respond with the same tangible act, with some tangible action, and then none of us shows up to your next board meeting, it won't be that the issue is dead and gone. What it will mean is that we've lost confidence in your ability to take difficult steps when they are called for. We are here tonight because we still have hope. Actions tonight can include a majority of board members in your public comments later in the meeting verbally committing to not voting for Ms. Mr. Astian to serve again as president of this board. The question is not whether Mr. Astian has a right to say what he said, 
it's whether it was the right thing to say as president of the board and representing you all. It wasn't. He did damage to students, faculty, and teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anka. Next is Tristan Stokes, followed by Tanya Stokes. It takes no compromise to give people their rights. It takes no money to respect the individual. It takes no political deal to give people freedom. It takes no survey to remove repression. Wise words from Harvey Milk that apply today. Right now, right in this room, I speak to the board, not to Ashton, asking you wholeheartedly to truly think when you vote on the next item. I understand that as Americans, we have a right to free speech, but freedom of speech does not equal freedom of consequences. He has said hateful and taunting things about FESD students, parents, and faculty. I am now begging the board to put an end to his tyranny and allow me and others like me to feel protected in the school district. As an aside, today is com National Coming Out Day. I am out, I am here, I am loud, and I am not going anywhere. Thank you. Next is Tanya Stokes followed by Emily Cameron. I am an FUSD parent, and I wholeheartedly support Brooke Ashton's right to exercise his freedom of speech. What I also support are the natural consequences. He has not been held accountable for his hurtful and hateful comments about many of the parents and children of FUSD. He continues to reference and hide behind his Judeo-Christian values as if his brand of morals and values are above all others. I have taught my children to be kind, loving people. I've taught them to give until they cannot anymore. I've taught them to stand up for themselves and those that are unable to do so, to help the weak, disabled, and poor. They do not lie, cheat, covet, steal, murder, or break any of the Christian commandments. And most importantly, I have taught them to own their actions and apologize when necessary. All of these lessons have come from a pagan lesbian household. FUSD boasts a student body of 74,000. By a conservative 10% estimation, that is no less than 7,400 LGBTQ students in this district feeling that they are being judged, bullied, and disrespected by the school board president. I am hoping that this is the last time I need to address the board on this issue. Brooke continues to behave in a manner unbecoming to this board in this district. In my former employment with a different school district, I was introduced to a phrase, moral turpitude. This is something I expect of people in power. He has not attempted a heartfelt apology. Instead, he's painted himself the victim and openly taunted our teachers on social media. Although I'm appreciative of Superintendent Nelson and all of his efforts to bridge the gaps, I am tired of listening to the other board members apologize for Brooks' behaviors. Please put an end to this by voting yes on this agenda item and figuring out a way to strip him of the power he is using to embarrass the board and this district. Thank you. Next is Emily Cameron. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> my name is Emily Cameron. I am an executive member at large of the LGBT caucus for the California Democratic Party. Um, I've spoken to this board previously and I don't want to just repeat everything I've said in the past. So I just want to remind you guys that we have a chance here to be part of the, the solution, not part of the problem. I th correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think anybody sitting in front of me here is lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. And to me, this is what, this is like the textbook definition of systemic inequality. Uh, there's a bunch of straight people, cisgender people, making these decisions, and I'm working very hard now to try to improve the LGBT representation in the Central Valley. Um, I'm hoping now that there's all of this attention on this issue and that people are looking forward to 2018 and beyond, that we can have um, some challengers for some of these people sitting in front of me who are um, LGBT folks running for political office. 
And I'm hoping that if anybody listening tonight is interested or has expressed, um, you know, thoughts about running for office, that they could seek me out and we could try to encourage a more diverse board of trustees in the future. And also, um, it's just disappointing having to keep coming over here. It's the inaction is just very depressing and I'm quite certain that if this were to happen in any other school district in you know Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, it would be quick over and done. But this is so ongoing and it's just tremendously embarrassing to have to keep doing this. So thank you so much for your time. Since there's no action agendized for this item, we will move on to the next to the next item. There are no C items to re, to uh, for this portion of the agenda. Board interim superintendent. Are there any board superintendent communications? Um, Member Mills. Yes, thank you. Uh, first, I, I know everybody's been waiting for this, but the reserve cap bill was actually signed by the governor, so that has um, now established that uh, the reserve fund is capped at 10 percent of the general fund. Um, secondly, the other bill that has been signed is a Native American Studies Bill requiring the State Department of Education to develop curriculum for Native American Studies. I would certainly hope that this district um, would get a hold of that curriculum and would offer uh, a Native American Studies course. The third thing that I wanted to ask about because um, this is um, something ongoing that is troubling me, and this is with respect to Jimby's vote to not uh, move forward and continue with Kaiser, and that was the vote that came from labor, not from um, the district side of the, the vote on that. So I'd like to get an update on that, and if there is anything at all that we can do to make sure that the 1,800 plus people who are on Kaiser, that we can keep that health care program for them and they can stay on it. And I'd also like to have um, uh, some input uh, in a board communication or some other method that's appropriate on whether or not there was an unauthorized delegation of the board's authority at the time Jimby was created in 2005. Member Cazares. So back to um, what our business here is, I just want to thank um, Principal Wheeler from Hoover High School who has been very welcoming to my family and myself at the events for Hoover High, including uh, the Fresno Unified Soccer uh, um, um, games that happened a couple of weeks ago, um, the football games where I've, they've just made me feel part of that family from day one. And so thank you very much to Principal Wheeler and Tim Carey and um, Nick and their staff. Um, looking forward to um, homecoming this Friday and wearing my green. Um, also, um, just so that uh, the public knows, we're moving forward with some very uh, important meetings between Hoover High leadership and Fresno State leadership and Bob Nelson, uh, Superintendent Bob Nelson and his staff in regards to bringing a collaboration forward between Fresno State and their neighboring high school campus of Hoover High to ensure there's a better collaboration and some programs that could be um, of partnership opportunities between our Hoover High students and our Fresno State students and their staff. Um, and I'm really appreciative of all of those that have come forward to schedule that meeting and get that back on the agenda as soon as possible. Thank you. A couple of questions. Um, can we get a, um, Superintendent Nelson, can we get a, um, have our procurement, procurement staff go through and have an audit done of the lease lease back at Bullard High School to make sure that all of the T's are crossed and the, and the I's are dotted, please? And then, um, can you, would you also be able to tell, we, I've talked to a lot of people, um, a lot of my uh, constituents that have special ed children, and I think it would, um, I would, I would um, 
ask you if you would be willing to, in maybe in your Friday message or something, talk a little bit about how we're doing a complete audit with Council of Great City Schools so that our so that our families know uh, where we're going with that and that, and that they know that the board is, um, that that's a high priority of the board. That would be fantastic. And then also, could we get a, um, we heard from uh, Abraham Hernandez tonight, and and um, and then and his stu and the and the children from uh, Wawona, which was extremely impressive. Those children, two of them are going to Edison, but three are going to Edison. We're going to talk about that, brother, down there. How we're going to keep them out of two. two. We're going to we're going to talk. I'm gonna let that pass because he's going to MIT. I agree with that one. So if we could just get a uh, an update because they were so fantastic to talk about the dual immersion program and how happy they were to see those young kids on that program. Can you can you get us a board communication on where we're at with that and all of our dual immersion schools on on the, I think it was five or six that we put into play this year, um, and uh, what the progress looks like with with all of those five or six whatever region that they're in and get it back to the board. That would be that would be very helpful. Um, I don't see anybody else left. To, member Member Mills. I'm sorry. There was one thing I wanted to add, but um, I did believe here in the presentation from um, the design science students that there might be a student who is applying to and perhaps accepted at West Point. But I would ask that we check with all of our high schools and see if any of our students have been accepted into any of the military academies. Um, frankly, that is a distinct honor, and if they have been, I'd like to have them recognized at a board meeting before the end of the school year. Not seeing any other um, discussion, uh, the meeting stands adjourned at 820.